So bullying and abuse are similar to alcoholism and addiction to substances. Um, and here's why. If you've ever known someone that was in recovery for substance abuse of some kind, you might have heard them talk about family systems theory. Or if you've taken a class on it, you might have heard about that. Family systems theory, um, in a nutshell, basically talks about how the addict or the alcoholic is not the only person who is uh, playing an active role in keeping them addicted, right? In keeping them um, in this pattern of misusing substances. In fact, it's more like a solar system where you have, let's say, the sun, and then you have a lot of planets orbiting around the sun, right? And, or you could think of it as a mobile that hangs above a crib for a baby. You know how it has lots of little, little dangling things around it? And if you tug on one of the strings of the mobile, it makes the whole thing go in a weird, out-of-balance position. And that's because each individual in that family are part of a larger social body or system. So, it's the same for bullying and abuse, whether it's substance abuse or physical abuse or social abuse, which is bullying, or psychological abuse, another form of bullying and abuse, or emotional abuse, or even self-abuse, right, S-I-B, and uh, self-abusive behavior, right? Um, so... All these different forms of abuse are best described, in my you know, opinion, by a social ecosystem perspective. So you have the bully, per the person who's bullying or acting in what I call a villainous uh, management style in their daily life at home or at work or at school or at church. And by villainous, what I mean is not that they, the person, are a villain, right? The villain term is a metaphor or an analogy. Um, you see them in movies, right? It's a character. It's a role that people play as part of a script. A script that ties in to each of the family system roles that each person is playing in order to keep this social structure intact to keep the addict addicted, to keep the bully a bully, to keep the abuser an abuser. It's an entire system designed to maintain oppression. And isn't that sad? It just kind of blows my mind, and hopefully it'll blow your mind, to think that people are just walking around uh, unconsciously on this autopilot mode, scripted by their unconscious or their subconscious, learning that they learned as a child in their families where their mom or dad might have been an abuser or a bully or an addict of some kind, right? It doesn't have to have been physical, but typically there was something going on at home that caused everyone to walk on eggshells around mom or dad, right? And this is being repeated in adulthood in all the different places where people are social and get together. So, I've put a list of all of these character roles on my website, Power vs. Force. That's power-vs-force.com. And I don't have all of them up there. I've got about 15 of them now. I started with just four. But I've come to realize that there's at least 15 habits that people perpetuate which enable and sustain bullying and abuse, as well as other forms of addiction and uh, addict behavior and alcoholism. So uh, check those out, but um, they involve um, the victim mindset, the Eeyore kind of person, that's one set of habits. Um, then you've got your, one I call the emperor, which is entitlement, right? They, they think that they have a special privilege to not have to earn anything in life, you should just give it to them. Um, 
Then you can move into the henchman role, which is very egocentric and not caring about others. You, you value personal goal attainment more than you value uh, mental health, which you can only get through a context of healthy social relating, right? So you can see that you can't really create and sustain a healthy social ecosystem if you don't have those first three or four habits. You know, and the next one is that villainous role, which is um, describes people who habitually try to force themselves or others. The addict and the abu the addict and the alcoholic are forcing their body to experience an artificially induced state of euphoria via drugs and alcohol. Right? It's self medicating. It's self soothing but they're not earning it by actually creating a situation in which they would naturally feel pleasure or contentment or tranquility or happiness, right? Instead, they're just staying in those toxic and dysfunctional social ecosystems where they experience pain emotionally, and instead of doing anything to fix it, they just unplug from their awareness of their feelings by using the drugs and alcohol. And uh, sometimes they, and then they learn how to survive in these environments by playing these roles, right? The victim mindset role works really well for the abuser or the villain. The bystander role works really well for the villain because the villain keeps to be staying in power, right? The henchman role is selfish, doesn't care about the health and functioning of environments, that works well for the villain. Then you've got your um, other characters like the minion role who can't set limits, who does the bidding of the villain out of fear. That works very well for the villain, do you see? Um, the chameleon turns on the hero who's trying to create positive change whenever the going gets tough, whenever um, the heat is turned on in the situation. That works well for who? Not the person in the chameleon role that just wants to be friends with everyone, not the person in the hero role who's trying to live uh, in a way that can get their needs met and achieve goals. It only works for the villain, right? So the politician role only works for the villain because the politician doesn't want to enforce or uh, create a standard of behavior. That's what the villain prefers. Anything, go anything goes, the villain just wants to create and disrupt, destroy. I mean, they want to create chaos and disrupt so that no one else can get anything done except for them. They're the cool, um, well-collected person in the room when everyone else is in turmoil because they're the puppet master pulling the strings, right? The rescuer. Um, who benefits by me trying to rescue someone from personal responsibility when they make uh, antisocial choices or choices that are bad for others? The villain benefits from me rescuing them. The hero doesn't benefit. All the other people that are trying to play positive roles in life, they don't benefit. The only person that benefits is that person who's abusing self or others. So there's several other habits there, but what you can see is that they all enable bullying and abuse to continue unchecked. So if you really say or see yourself as someone who is doing something to solve this problem, then it makes sense to me that you would not be engaging in any of those roles. Because all of those roles are just going to keep bullying and abuse alive and well. Which is the exact opposite of what we say we're doing. Alright, have a great day. Go out there and live heroically and uh, be true to yourself and others.